Uh, that's good, yeah. So, so ladies and gentlemen, we've uh, just completed um, adding pathogen reservoir dynamics uh, as based on the, um, the uh, shedding, which is occurring within the vicinity of a certain facility. Um, and uh, next, we're going to be um, looping that around so that individuals can get infected from those pathogen reservoirs. Kurt, would you mind uh, setting this setting this up um, for me just so I don't run low on power? Sorry for the trouble. Okay, so uh, just to sort of situate us again um, uh, where we where we were, we had a workplace whose dynamics, uh, whose pathogen reservoir dynamics were characterized um, using a simple stock and flow model. And I argued that uh, while this is extremely stylized and simplistic as teaching examples need to be to be manageable in most cases, um, that probably some pretty good theory could, could inform uh, a more sophisticated model also in system dynamics of uh, pathogen um, uh, levels over time and their dependence on environmental characteristics, etc. But the key thing that we had is we had some environmental, uh, we had some inactivation, some net rate of change decline um, for pathogen left on its own. But that shedding coming in here, which um, was coming in at a certain rate. And this, it is to this I want to draw your attention again. So we had a per capita shedding rate for those who were, for those people who are in a shedding state and are in the workplace at this time, each of those people will be shedding per a per capita shedding rate, shedding pathogen. And, and then in order to figure out the total amount of pathogen being shedded in this facility, we need to multiply that per capita rate times a total number of people who are shedding within this facility. And to do that, what we do is we ask to find the number of agents within a short distance, that's 10 units of space, to this current facility, and asking to find people who are in the population within that distance of this facility. And having gotten that list of people within a distance 10 of this facility, we then pass it to this function. And you folks wrote that function, remember that? Count shedders in group, that's what we were, we were doing uh, earlier, this count shedders in group, right? It was, it was this function here that we wrote. We go through each person in the group, we say, are you a shedder? If so, tally you down. You a shedder, so tally you down. Next one, are you a shedder? So this counted the number of shedders in that group. Of a group, what fraction are in this state of shedding? Really, what that, that's what that does. Okay. May, I may have missed this yeah. before, but what's the unit for that 10? That's a good question. That unit, we could specify, um, so that unit right now, is in visual units here. So each of these is of these small grid squares is five, mm -hmm. and so that would be ten. By the way, the way you can tell that is um, it, you could see down at the bottom. There's a scale thing. Hard to see for us there. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. I thought this was each five, but no, actually this is ten. So it's within this this little bound here. Um, there. However, uh, I see. So you. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Okay, this might be okay. Hey, there we go. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. Okay, so you could see if you want to get a sense of how big these things are, it actually will give the scales. I move the mouse around or tell me where the mouse is, so you can get a sense that this is so. This is like 10, 10 units. So 10 units is the size of one of those squares. Now, one of the things that this means, um, or is that that's you know, we have to judge there that distance. Um, according to that scale. However, this find agents and range, you can also specify it to be computed in a certain length unit. So you could actually say, 
Um, and I've actually don't recall doing this, but I could say, for example, within 10 meters, and how would I do that? Well, let's, let's see, see what it says. There's a thing called length units here. So I could say length unit dot, and I could specify, I want to find people within 10 meters of this certain distance. And that would be more robust because, you know, it's, it's a little bit of an abstract unit the, the actual distance. So let's let's just run this. We'll, we'll dive down to the level of a, um, you know, we'll do it with, with this one, which has two, two workplaces, right? Um, okay, um, to be clear, right now people are not getting infected from the environment. They're just right now getting infected with a certain hazard rate per day, okay? We're gonna loop it back and uh, do it within the environment. Okay, so let's go look at a factory. Let's go look at a workplace. Here we have this workplace, five days have passed, oh, sorry, five hours have passed. Um, okay, 10 hours have passed, etc. cetera, okay? Um, here's factory one or workplace one, workplace two. Now, the dynamics has started, okay? It um, started rising. So what's going on here? Why is it rising? Well, if you wanna see why it's rising and declining at different times, Right now, there's zero pathogen being shed because people are off shift. They're, they've gone home. But watch this. In about eight hours after this, or sorry, 16 hours after this, this went up to about 24. Now, now we're back again at time 40. 16 hours later, people are back on shift. Someone is shedding at that facility and therefore it's rising. And it's rising to a higher level because there was some residual pathogen left over even after the die downs it's dying down some more and now it's going to rise again but soon enough ladies and gentlemen we are going to see that it's going to go from one person shedding to to two people shedding now it's it's dying down so now we have shedders within the facility in greater numbers and they're shedding and now i think it's gone up uh, three, yeah, three people shedding. So we're getting a buildup of dynamics in this facility in a decline, this decline being sort of an ambient decline in the absence of shedding. In some environments, this decline might in fact be a multiplication, right? It might actually multiply, in which case we could readily simulate that as having competing, there's some die off and then there's some bacterial multiplication rates. We could easily put that into effect. In fact, maybe we'll do that. Um, but this is dynamics of the environment. What we don't have yet is that feeding back to this, and we will turn our attentions to that. But first, let's, let's put in, suppose there was endogenous multiplication of bacteria. What do you think? Would that be of interest? See that? Okay, so what we do is we would put in to the stock, I and mean, we you can do this in, in different ways, but what I would do is I would put in here, I would put in system dynamics, we wanna drag in a flow. Now the system dynamics palette in any logic is, it, it, it's got some maturation that's still required. So I'm gonna say endogenous um, bacterial multiplication, okay, you could, probably a better ways to describe it. And one of the reasons I say it's a little bit awkward is is, is um, you have to kind of beg, oh, come on. Um, it's a little bit finicky in terms of its spacing compared to Venson. Okay, hey, come on, okay, yeah. Now, now what we're gonna have is, we're gonna have a multiplication rate and the basic idea here is this endogenous bacterial multiplication, um, this is probably it should be better called, I, I probably made a mistake by calling it just that, this should probably be called new bacteria, um, new pathogen from multiplication, new pathogen from multiplication, okay? This is the new sort of pathogen being produced by bacterial multiplication. And ladies and gentlemen, 
there would be a multiplication rate that's occurring. Okay, here we go. Boom. Mo uh, bacterial um, um, growth rate or, or birth. I'm going to say birth rate. I, it, it, the point is, it's it's the new bacteria coming in. Okay, forgive me the naive term birth rate for this, but that's that's how it functions. Um, and this is going to be a rate, this bacterial birth rate, and really it should live in Maine. So I'm going to take it out of Maine, and I am going to put it up in in Maine. Sorry, I'm going to take it out of workplace and put it up in Maine. It's going to be called bacterial birth rate. Okay, and similarly, just while we're at it, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take this mean workplace pathogen lifetime, and I'm going to put that up in Maine so we can change it in a, in in uh, our experiments. So here we go. Can you just copy and paste things? Yeah. Yeah, you you oh, cut and paste, cool. cut and paste. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now, ladies and gentlemen, um, ah, okay, so, so we could write this without those being seen, but a better idea is to actually introduce what's called a shadow variable that will actually, oh, it doesn't allow it because it lives in Maine. Okay, yeah, fine, fine. We'll just put it here directly. Pathogen inactivation. Now, instead of being divided by mean workplace pathogen lifetime, what will I have to say? We just moved it to Maine. So instead of just referring to it directly, what does it have to say? Maine dot. Maine dot. I wish I could show it visually, um, but but I can't. You have to put it in a dynamic variable, which then pointed towards the main one. Correct. Yeah. Which would, yeah. A little bit of extra. Yeah. yeah. A little bit too much. OK. New pathogen from multiplication. Notice it's complaining about it. Why is it complaining? Because it, it says it depends on this visually, but it's it's got nothing in the formula that makes it depend on that. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's make this formula a pathogen reservoir times main dot pathogen birth rate. I think I called it. Is that what I called it, Kurt? Pathogen, bacterial birth rate, I called it. I should have called it pathogen birth rate, bacterial birth rate. Do you see that? OK. Yeah, I am uploading each version of this. I did upload the version before we came here, just as we were getting, uh, thought I uploaded the one after we kick, got kicked out when we went here. Um, but I'm not sure about that. Before that, I did. OK. Um, so here we go. So what do we got? We've got now a pathogen inactivation, um, pathogen reservoir divided by mean workplace path, uh, pathogen lifetime. We've got no change to our shed pathogen. We've got new pathogen for multiplication being some bacteria birth rate times the pathogen reservoir. So there's going to be some endogenous, endogenous multiplication of bacteria that's possible. Okay, and there's going to be some inactivation due to bacteria dying off endogenously as well. Later we could have cleaning going on, the cleaning, and it cuts down the pathogen reservoir weekly. There's cleaning and you know, spray hose down or whatever, and it will decrease it. Disinfection, what have you. Okay, um, should I keep something up here longer? Or or can we go back and set that parameter in main? Well, uh, mm -hmm. On the parameter yeah. or bacterial, yeah. what was the rate? So that's what I'm about to go set. Okay. I actually haven't set that yet. I would like to suggest bacterial birth, birth rate here. Um, I'd like to suggest, uh, what, 10% per day or something like that. So it'd be a rate, a per day rate of 10%. Of Maybe it will grow on, it'll grow by that. Um, something along those lines. I mean, 
I, I, I'm not familiar with the bacterial dynamics involved with these, so I'm, maybe it's larger than that. Maybe it's per hour, you know, fairly fast multiplying bacteria, what have you. Okay, um, probably it should be called pathogen birth rate um, rather than bacterial. You can change the name there and show them how Oh, yeah. Them. Oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, can I show you a nice feature of AnyLogic? Okay, you, no one's protesting. Um, so what you can do, if you want to change the name of a variable, it'll behoove you to do this. Okay, so what would happen if I don't do this, okay? Don't do what I'm about to do. Um, okay, if I just typed pathogen birth rate, what, what do you think will happen? Yeah, there's, a, there's an error because somewhere else it's expecting it, right? And it's not a big deal. I could go click there and change the name there. But there's an easier way, ladies and gentlemen. Can, may I show you that easier way? Okay. So, I'll show, the easier way is to do this. Go and, and, and start to type it. Pathogen birth rate. But you'll notice there's a little, don't press enter yet. You'll notice there's a little thing here that says, press control enter to perform refactoring, replace name occurrences. You can do that, ready? Control enter. Oh, oh my, oh my gosh. Oh, that's probably because I just changed it. Oh, right, okay, let me, let me try it again. Pathogen birth rate, control enter. Okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> and, I've never seen that happen before. So, um, pathogen birth rate. I, I, I don't know. Did it work on yours? No. Same thing? Same thing. Oh. Okay, that, that is... Is it because we're using it in stocks? I, I don't know. I've never seen that before. Maybe... No, uh, I'll see if I can investigate it. Mumble, yeah. Um, okay, so we'll have to do it by hand. In general, it will rename it nicely, replace all occurrences of it with that new name. It will go and ask you, replace this one, this one, this one. It will try to find everywhere it's used and replace it with the new name, which is sweet. In this case, though, it was sour. Okay, uh, or bitter. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so now we should have endogenized growth. Let's go try that. Watch this. Okay, um, so now I'm going to go down to a workplace and here we go. Pathogen reservoir. Do you see what's going on now? It's not even decaying. Why is that? Why is it staying flat? What does it tell you if a stock is staying flat? It's neither going up nor down. What does it tell you about the inflows and outflows? They're the same. Inflow, remember, is a rate of inflow, number of pathogen per hour or what have you being added. This is the outflow pathogen per hour. If, it's, if the stock is staying flat, it's just like your bathtub staying, the water in your bathtub is coming in, and the drain is going down, the bathtub will stay constant if the inflow is equal to outflow. The rate of draining is the same as the rate of water coming in. Under those conditions, it will stay straight. So now we have this pathogen reservoir just building up. And it's not growing endogenously, but it's, it's not declining either. And so when people stop shedding, it will maintain its level, as we see now. It's maintaining its level on an ongoing basis. Now, one thing we could do, and we'll simulate it later, ladies and gentlemen, you'll notice this is going along. We could actually, in the model, or here, we could actually stop it. In fact, let me, let me re-illustrate that from the start, ladies and gentlemen, just because it'll be more when it's coming in. Watch this. Here we have it rising. Hey, come on, I don't want to go that fast. Okay, ready? Watch this. Suppose I were to have a cleaning event. Boom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lower it to zero. 
Now what's going to happen? Now it's still going to, it's, I cleaned it, and now it's rising again. See that? It's rising back. Why? Because it was cleaned once, it got rid of that bacteria, but there's still people shedding, and then there's still some endogenous uh, elements of it. And I'll, I'll clean it again. Here it's back, got reset, but now it's building up again. Now, a worse situation in the torrid months of the summer, perhaps in, in, in barns or, or in bath facilities, might be if we had something like, ladies and gentlemen, where the pathogen birth rate, I'm going to take this small population, I'm going to paste a new, um, a new, uh, okay, I'm toning out here. I don't know what, what, why I didn't do it. I'm going to do copy, and I'm going to do paste here. Boom. Um, okay, and this will be small population, um, high pathogen birth, high pathogen multiplication. Um, and I'm going to make it no longer 10% per day, but what? 20% per day. Can we see that? All I did is I created a new experiment. I copied this one, created a new experiment. Pathogen birth rate, 20% per day. Are we ready to see it? What do you think will happen now? What will happen when people are off shift? Anyone want to think? What will happen when people are off shift? First little bit is happening. No one's on shift yet. What's going to happen when they're, they're off shift? During their on shift, it's going to grow just like it did previously. What happens when, it's, when they're off shift, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, look at this. Do you see what I'm seeing? Okay, now they're getting off shift, but why is it still growing? And endogenous multiplication. Okay, I'm going to stomp on it. Ready? Stamp and burn. Boom. Okay, and now let's let's. Right. Now we're multiplying again. Right. It it. Why did it have zero for a little bit? Well, during a period it was cleaned. People were off. It was assumed to be zero. It wasn't. It didn't have anything to multiply. But now it's multiplying again. I could go and and maybe Kurt should be in the center. He can. Yeah. Which one is Or you know, we could imagine we reduce it to very small levels. Maybe not zero, but there's still a little bit residual, right? After cleaning, now it's still multiplying. But really, when people start coming in. That's when it's going to start growing again, right? Um, here it's multiplying endogenously, but soon enough people will be on shift. Now it's taking off. They're on shift. They're shedding, and and it's taking off. And they're going to go off shift soon. They're off shift now, but it's still growing endogenously. We could again clean, maybe down to to a low level. And that will help while they're off shift some, but then they're gonna, it's gonna, okay, okay, get it while it's off shift, down to one. We're trying to control it, but it's growing. Endogenous growth of pathogen. Hey, 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 boom, clean. Okay, but it only helps so long. Okay, what part of this are we missing? We're missing the fact that not only is growing and multiplying there in the facility, it's infecting people. And they're going to come back and shed it. But not only that, if this is starting in a single facility, ladies and gentlemen, it may spread to other facilities because they bring it back home. It spreads at home. And then someone else in the home works in the other workplace. And they bring it there. Should we look at that? It won't take long. And then we'll break for lunch. A lunch must much deserved. Okay, so I'll, as I want, I'm going to save this and, and go to the next version and post it. Okay, so here we go. I am going to go here and post. There we go. And 
it is it is now uploaded. It's version five. Environmental contamination hybrid version five is is now online. Um, I will also stop the video. Um, and and we're now going to proceed on to uh, having individuals infected from the.